Good evening, I'm Brady Gallagher. Coming up in the newscast, an African dance ensemble comes to Kutztown and a Kutztown Electronic Media alumni heads to the Olympics. And I'm Steve Majiri with an update on men's basketball and a look into Kutztown's very own Hall of Famer, Andre Reid. We also have Emily Roman with your Kutztown weather forecast and Haley Bianco with Hollywood Minute. News break begins now. Kutztown graduate of 87, John Chupin, is working as a sports cinematographer in Sochi, Russia, covering the Winter Olympics for NBC Sports. His main job being a studio camera operator in the NBC SN studio filming hosts Rebecca Lau, Dan Patrick, and Al Michaels. Chupin has traveled all over the world, very far away from his hometown of Haverton, working more than two decades as a sports cinematographer. He graduated Monsignor Bonner High School in 1983, earning a degree five years later at Kutztown University. After graduation, he started his career in filming sports. The cinematographer arrived in Sochi via NBC Direct Flight from Newark on January 29th. After the Olympic-sized coverage, Chupin will return home February 25th. On Tuesday, well-known Ghanaian dancer Nani Agbeli performed in Schaefer Auditorium along with the Kutztown University African Percussion Ensemble, student dancers and singers. Agbeli was born into a family of prominent dancers and drummers and currently teaches at Tufts University and other schools in the Boston area. He also directs several ensembles and even leads study tours to Ghana over the summer. The Obie Award-winning play by Eve Ensler, The Vagina Monologues, is sponsored by FMLA and the Women's Center tonight and tomorrow from 7 to 10 in the multi-purpose room of the MSU. This Kutztown production is performed parallel with Worldwide Valentine's Day campaigns to raise awareness and money for anti-violence campaigns. Proceeds from the play will be donated to V-Day, International Spotlight, and other local charities. Tickets are $5 for students and eight, or $10 for non-students. Good manners are associated with the level of your competence at work. Etiquette can say a lot about your personal character, and on February 25th from 6 to 8.30, a Cobb Senior Etiquette Dinner will be held so that students may learn the basics of proper dining, including introductions and handshakes. How to handle tricky food is only one of the dining tips you will learn at this dinner held in the multi-purpose room of the MSU. By understanding dining ma ma manners, you can use it as an advantage to feel confident in any situation, in and outside the workplace. Pre-registration is required. Are you planning on attending the etiquette dinner? Yeah, that seems like a good opportunity to learn. Uh, what is it? It's a, you work your way in, big fork to small yeah. fork. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll be back with what? Uh, we'll be back right after this. Kutztown University, the place you chose to spend your college days. Friendships began. Memories were made, and dreams achieved on graduation day. Time moves on, new faces come and go, but one thing remains, you can always come back home. So warm compared to last week. Yesterday, I was walking outside without a coat on. Oh, finally, another like a nice hot 40 degrees. Yeah. What's weather going to look like, Emily? Thanks, guys. Well, I hope you all got a chance to get out and enjoy the beautiful weather we had today. The temperatures were high up in the 40s, and expect a little bit um, 
rain tonight and just a low of 36. But don't worry because tomorrow it's going to be warm again with a high of 46 and just a low of 27. But make sure you remember your umbrella when you go out tomorrow because we're expecting some rain and thunderstorms throughout the day. And now into our weekend. It's going to be all nice and sunny with a high of 52 Saturday. Just be careful with all the flooding from all the snow melting. And then Sunday, just a little cloudy, but a high of 43, a low of 25 again. And now going into the week, it's going to, the temperatures are going to go back down into the 30s. And then eventually Wednesday in the high, 20, in a high of 29 and a low of 10. So it'll go back down to the teens. We're expecting a little bit of snow. But so enjoy this weekend now when you can because cold temperatures are coming back again. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Emily. Puppies came to Kutztown today thanks to the counseling and psychological services in Beck Hall. The puppies were brought to help students relieve stress from schoolwork and the recent bad weather. Not only was the event about playing with the puppies, but also there is information available on the psychological services and what they provide and how you can get help. On February 23rd, some faculty of Kutztown University will perform in a faculty artist concert series from 3 p.m. to 5. Majore Trio featuring Marie Aline Cadeau on the cello, Johannes Dietrich from Lebanon Valley College playing the violin, and Daniel Emmel on the piano. The concert is free and will be held at St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Fleetwood, PA. All are welcome to attend. And now let's head over to Haley Bianco with the Hollywood Minute. Hey guys, welcome back for another semester filled with Hollywood buzz. Earlier this month, on February 2nd, American actor Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away at the age of 46. His most recent work was his role as the head game maker in the Hunger Games series. In recent news regarding the actor's will, it has been reported that Hoffman requested that his son Cooper be kept far away from Hollywood. In his will, Hoffman asked that his son be raised in Manhattan, Chicago, or San Francisco, but not L.A. In other Hollywood news, Jonathan Davis, the frontman for the band Korn, recently unleashed conspiracy theories. Davis suggested that President Obama has a secret agenda of becoming a dictator, with the help of Miley Cyrus, Justin Bieber, and Kanye West. Davis's theory is that Obama is using celebrity scandals in the media as a distraction from the real news. Check out Korn's most recent music video, Spike in My Veins, on YouTube to see for yourself what Davis is referring to. With your weekly Hollywood Minute, I'm Haley Bianco. Now, back to the news desk. I've never really listened to Corn before, but I'll probably check out that YouTube video. You like Corn? Well, I guess we're polar opposites. <laughs> you like, you know, metal, and I like music. <laughs> Coming up next in sports, men's basketball and former Golden Bear Andre Reed achieves every pro athlete's dream. Coming up right after this. If you're anything like me, 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 you have some interest in communications. And electronic media is what it's all about. Whether you're interested in radio, television, video cameras, lighting, directing, screenwriting, or any type of editing at all, you know, it's all some form of storytelling. Kutztown University does a great job making us understand the importance in that. Your first semester here, you're taking classes that are also workshops, and before you know it, you begin creating. The courses here get equipment in our hands right away and give us a realistic feel to what a professional will be like. You're shooting video, recording audio, and truly producing something of your own. Our professors provide us with all the tools necessary to become a professional. We have a fully equipped studio and a control room, two Mac labs, multiple editing suites, P2 cameras, DSLRs, lighting and grip kits, and audio recording studios. It motivates us to really learn by making the education a fun experience. You work together with other students throughout the process and learn how to collaborate within a group, which is important. The industry demands working with others. In order to fulfill the major, the students have to complete an internship. Normally our last semester before graduation, the staff helps you line up an internship that requires a minimum of 30 hours a week. We're basically working a full-time job and in a realistic setting working with professionals and learning the field firsthand. It's a networking opportunity as much as a job opportunity. Kutztown stands out a lot in that way. Not many other schools require such a thing, and it's a great experience. The students carry and represent the school's name, and it's neat to become a part of such a good reputation. That reputation influences our job search. Employers know our school and know what we are capable of. So if you're thinking of where to spend your next four years of college and you're thinking you're a little bit like me and you're thinking you're a little bit like me and you're thinking you're a little bit like me and you're thinking you're a little bit like me think about how worthwhile of an experience you want think about the electronic media department at Kutztown University Kutztown University Kutztown University Kutztown University
Now to the lighter side of things with sports. The Kutztown men's basketball team dropped a close one to PSAC rival Lockhaven by a final score of 91 to 85. The Golden Bears were without two of their starters as Ryan Connolly and Elijah Jackson missed the contest due to injuries. This opened a door of opportunity for multiple new faces. Freshman Austin Ford and Leroy Haggard each saw double-digit minutes and combined for 19 points in the contest. KU was led by their talented young frontcourt consisting of freshman phenom Josh Johnson and sophomore Tracy Peel. Peel finished with a team-high 18 points and 6 rebounds. Johnson, on the other hand, finished the game with 17 points and 11 boards to notch his third double-double of the season. The Golden Bears found themselves in a hole early as they trailed by as many as 18 points at one point. However, in front of their largest crowd of the season, the nearly all-freshman lineup roared back to cut the lead to as low as five when Tracy Peel hit his third three-pointer of the season. However, Lockhaven made their free throws down the stretch and held on for the win. This marks the second time in as many games that the Golden Bears have scored 80 points or more. However, this is also the second game in a row that they've surrendered 90 or more. They look to bounce back against 2-22 and Shippensburg Saturday evening. Tip-off is at 7.30 p.m. at Keystone Arena. Now for a special segment on a very special player. Former Buffalo Bills wide receiver and Kutztown alum Andre Reed was selected into this year's Pro Football Hall of Fame class this past week. Reed, who was a four-year letterman at KU from 1981 to 1984, made 142 career catches for 2,002 yards and 14 touchdowns, making him one of the most prolific wide receivers in small college football history. Although his records have been surpassed, he still ranks among the top five all-time in school ranks in multiple statistical categories. Reed was named All-PSAC in 1983 and 1984 and is one of only four KU football players to have his number retired. Reed was selected to the Division II Team of the Quarter Century team in 1997, and he was also taken in the fourth round by the Buffalo Bills and made it to four Super Bowls and was also named to seven Pro Bowls. When asked about this prestigious honor, Reed thanks KU for all its support and mentioned how, quote, it not only puts the school on the map, but it puts Division II on the map, he said. Reed retired from the game in 2000 and earned his degree from Kutztown in 2005. He is the first Golden Bear ever to be indoctrinated into a professional sports hall of fame and is only the fourth Division II football player ever to do so. It's great to see a guy from such a small school make it a football immortality. Congratulations on being the first, and I hope you're not the last. That's all for sports, and remember to log on to KUBears.com for all the latest in KU athletics. That's all we have for you tonight. We'll see you again next Thursday. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date on all the KU news. For Brady, Emily, Haley, and the rest of the crew, good, good night. night.